Welcome guys! In today's video I will teach you how to paint Japanese cherry blossom using ink and watercolor. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the content. Let's start with the first rope of the main branch and the dominant sub-branches. This part is the backbone of the whole composition. Try to make it loose and leave some gaps in your strokes. We should aim to achieve harmony with the shades you loaded into your brush and try to display the dryness along with wet marks in these strokes. It might sound difficult and confusing, but in practice it's simple as driving a car. With the right speed, pressure and load of ink in your brush, you can achieve this harmony easily. Relax your muscles in your arm, hand and fingers. Then try to go with the flow. If you feel some kind of resistance, you just twist your brush and ease off the pressure and enjoy the ride. When your strokes getting too dry, go a bit slower. When it's getting too wet, go faster and ease off the pressure. The wet bit on the branches creates depth with the shades, while the dry strokes creates texture and gives a bark-like effect and also gives us the chance to paint some flowers in front of the branches to make it more natural. In nature, flower spreads across the whole tree, therefore it's necessary to cover some bits of the branches with flowers later in the process. After we're done with the first stroke, let's carry on with some touch-ups and outlines. Refine the edges with lines, do not close the whole branch with it. Let the energy flow through the whole picture. Let the painting paint itself, do not force to grow it your way, but guide it to grow on its own. Don't judge by appearance at this point, that's the most important, it's like a child. If you are stressful, your creation will be stressful. Our next step to think about the composition and the density of the flowers. I usually like to concentrate them into two or three places on the picture. Avoid concentration in only one spot. Also imagine the next step when we connect the flowers with the small branches and place the flowers accordingly. Now when you apply the flowers, do a short dot-like stroke with the side of your brush. And remember it's not a line or a dot. It's something in between. As your color fades, dip slightly into clean water and keep moving outwards to show some faded flowers in the distant background. And don't forget to cover the branch on some places. At this point, you might feel disappointed when you're looking at your pictures. But you shouldn't be worried. In this kind of painting, the whole picture comes alive at the very end. We are working with layers in an unusual way as the layers are not on top of each other, but next to each other, and we will keep going back to work on all the layers. After the paint dried, let's get back to the branches and try to connect the flowers with the tiny branches. Don't force them as I mentioned earlier, just go with the flow, play with the speed and make it more interesting with the dry strokes, randomize the movement by twisting and pushing your brush. Avoid determined strokes appearing in your mind. Don't manipulate and control, just be in the present. Once it's done, fractalize the branches even further. So from the small branches, carry on with the tiny ones. For the finishing touches we need to place dot-like marks randomly around our subject, using black ink with the side of the brush, the same way as we did on the flowers. And now, a 
attach the small flower buds to the smallest dots on the tiny branches. And that was the end of my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or suggestions, comment down below and do not forget to like, subscribe and press the bell button to get notified when I upload new content. Check out my other social media accounts to see more artworks and if you're interested in learning from me, send me a private message on Facebook.